Oh, wait. So this is kind of interesting. Because I didn't expect to be here at all. So, the love of my life is a woman that ran away from me. What do you do? Quick answer. Maybe you just keep mentioning her without really mentioning her. Because I think she would hate it if I would say her name. Plus, I want her to know herself that it's her. Right? Because if I mention her, she should know it herself, that it's her I'm talking about. And it just takes a lot of patience to wait for a woman like this. Because of course you have to work with your fear. But knowing how you feel about her may just help you to understand how she may feel about you. And. Nah, it's all about patience. Patience and patience and patience. But most of all, making the decision that will bring you closer to that person or to that goal, whatever it is. You know, it may be your wife. It may be, you know, a vision of yourself or of a place where you want to be. And you just always try to keep focus on that place or on that vision that you have that feeling and then you hold it inside you don't talk to people about it like you may say that there is a goal that you have but you don't share details about it because they will ruin it for you because you're gonna say something like ah oh, yeah maybe this and this person right and then they're gonna tell you stuff like yeah forget about her or that's impossible it's like when I tell people how I intend you know to earn a living with this kind of work and they say no that's not enough you know you should do something else you know come and work for me yes yeah, sure that you can suck me dry and give me jobs and uh, leech off my good mood because that's what people do they see you have like a good mood and a positive attitude they will use you and they will suck your energy if you make it easy for them. And that's why, yes, you could say I ran away from home right now because I needed to have a change of scenery. And now I can go back and feel good about the day I just spent, the slacklining I did, you know. Now I could have, now I probably gave 10 people or 15 people a smile. If I would have been with my dad, you know, he would have just drained me and I would have been empty afterwards. Because he just... Right? It's like a man in the desert. Only instead of water, he sucks your love. And I can't do that. I mean, that's what he, why he has got a wife for. She has, it's her job. It's not my job, right? It's not my job to give my dad what he wants. Because what he needs is to learn to be okay on his own. And he never managed that. He always ran from one woman to the next and then he kind of crash landed with my mom. And they got along, you know, had children. And then you see parents and they leech off of their children already. Like they don't have any motivation to play with their child. But you know, they like the kind of the good mood. They just want to have like the child cuddle with them. The worst I saw once was a woman that put her cold hands on a child's stomach. Do you know how uncomfortable that is? And she said, oh, you're so warm. I mean, that's just awful. That's just abuse. 
that's just emotional abuse, physical abuse on so many levels. Like you're the one that should keep the child cuddly and warm and safe and not to leech off its warmth or happiness or whatever. So that means self-responsibility. Like make sure you are fine on your own so that when you come together with a person, because if you're fine on your own, you will meet a person that's also fine on her own. Because you don't really need anyone. But if there's somebody, you know, that's really nice to spend time with, then it will be just so easy suddenly. Because my problem was often, I didn't know what to do in relationships. Right? So, I always ex was expecting to do something with my partner and my partner was expecting something to do with me but then you know at one point you also get kind of pissed with each other because maybe you want to do stuff on your own but then you don't know what and now I just learned how to be okay on my own I'm actually really good on my own as long as I keep working so if I just sit around all day I'm just bored you know and then I will watch movies and masturbate now I have a job and I worked hard to have a job like this to keep doing it to just you know have trust have faith keep going look at what do I want to do today you know introduce change every day but also just you know have a focus on your goal and you just keep going and now it's making these videos and I know after that it will be writing books and then you just let life sort itself out and you just keep working at the project you currently have and that's your focus and if you have another job you know that brings in the money you can have also different kind of projects that when you get at home or for weekends because I think it's important to do stuff on your own and to be okay to be silent even in company to not always talk because then I meet these people in the park and they sit together and they try to talk about stuff all the time. Then they don't know about what. And then they sit there with their phones and then they try to talk about stuff they find on their phones. And It's like this forceful talking because they think if nobody talks, it's a problem. No, it's a problem to you. Because you, know, you have to keep the conversation going because if nobody's talking, you feel insecure. That's for example what my dad has and my sister. If I don't talk to them, they feel insecure. It's hell for them. But that doesn't mean I have to talk to them all the time. That means sometimes I'm just quiet. Just really say nothing. It depends. Sometimes I feel more like talking and sometimes I feel like not talking. I have to have the right to make decisions with these things. So yeah, right now there's like a lot of stuff piled up in me. So that's when talking is good. And I'm talking to the camera, but I'm only talking to the camera because I want people to learn from the stuff I talk about. You know, if I wouldn't do YouTube or a podcast or write books, I would just go for walks and talk to myself. Because the only reason I talk about these things is because that's how I intend to spread my knowledge and because it's kind of my job to talk about it that's just how it is and I'm accepting it and that's why I talk about these things if it wouldn't be my job to talk you know, I would be silent much more and I would probably have another job maybe I would be a postman and then I would be, you know, trying to be as good of a postman as I can be. Because I actually love the job. But maybe my feeling is telling me, you know, maybe you love it. But because you feel like, oh, maybe you should be something different. Maybe you also should be a YouTuber. And then you're trying to be a YouTuber, but you actually like being a postman. And you can't understand why you like it, but you just love it. You just love the job. You love everything about it. And you can't explain why and you think, ah, oh, shouldn't I earn more money or whatever. But maybe that's just the life you need to be happy. 
and that's, that's also accepting it right to accept because I've tried doing all these jobs and I hated them all you know at first I kind of liked them but I, I hated them all in the end and this now is the only thing I ever did that I actually enjoy so I would be stupid if I would have found something that I actually like after having searched for years I would have been stupid to not persist in it to just continue and that's what I'm doing I continue and that was the decision today I learned from my mistakes with the mosque it wasn't a mistake but in a way a lesson from the lesson with the mosque and from the lesson with chopping wood with my dad and I realized no a definite no this is not what I want to do anymore I don't want to do other people's jobs anymore that's your job and then I in a way I have to pretend like I'm actually not there I actually I have to consider myself unavailable for my family to help them in any way other than the way that I sometimes feel like I help right like sometimes cooking food and cleaning the kitchen you know that's the help that I can offer anything else do it yourself do it yourself and that's just like some really firm boundaries and they try to wiggle around it and as soon as you give them one speck of like you know weakness where you feel a bit bad for your dad and then he's got you already you know, and then he sucks your energy and then you you know he doesn't give a shit if that drains you because he w doesn't understand it and he also doesn't try to understand it he doesn't want to understand it, and he can't understand it but also because if you're selfish you don't give a shit anyway because you want right you have to help me now you say well no <laughs> well I don't like that and that shows then their true face, right? They play the victim and then they expect you to help them and maybe they act a bit like nice but if you don't help them suddenly, you know, they don't like you anymore. Well then, then they never liked you in the first place. Well that's actually wrong, they never liked themselves in the first place. Well probably when they were born but then somehow along the way they started hating themselves and everybody else. So you're just, you know, projection you're just a mirror for them <laughs> you know there's all this noise of course I'm talking a lot I also feel like I ought to talk a bit less like why can't I just make chilled videos you know when nobody's talking because I believe that if you come to my channel it's not just about chilled videos because I did already you know I do some of these but these are like I mean I have to also do spiritual advice because that's what I'm supposed to be doing sharing some of the things that I learn along my way like that it's important to keep people from your back if you want to progress if you have like a mission that you want to accomplish that you have to be in certain ways somewhat selfish And that's what I'm trying to get across to you. Some of the things that I have learned. And you can compare it to some of the things you may have learned. But maybe you're missing the insight. Maybe you're missing, like, what can that teach you? And I don't think everybody has the time to reflect as much as I do. Because some people do work regular jobs, some people still go to school. So they can't make all of these decisions. But they can start educating themselves. And start taking responsibility for their own health and for the way they live. And take responsibility for your happiness. And realize that everything is a choice. So if you want to be unhappy, it's your choice. 
You know, if you choose to work in a job that you hate, it's your choice. It's always your choice. So you choose fear over love. So if you want to choose love, and maybe that word doesn't mean anything to you, then choose happiness. Then choose freedom, because that's what I chose. I chose freedom, and I found love. And I found God, and I found spirituality, and I found energy, and I found all these different kinds of states of consciousness. And I can tell you that I did not always feel like this. I could have not always done this. Because I was in a very dark place for most of my life. And I, like I said, I don't exactly know when it started, but it started quite early. Like most of my childhood, I can tell you, it's like a dark speck in my entire life. It's just basically hell. Most of my childhood is just a dark speck in my life. And that's why I can tell the difference, because I know I know. Like I feel different now. I feel more complete because I worked to get back these parts of my soul that were still in darkness, these inner children that I healed during ayahuasca and jurema sessions. I worked hard on myself. I looked in the places that most people run away from. And that's why my dad feels the way he feels because he's afraid of his own past, of his own darkness. He doesn't want to look at it, so he always talks about like materialistic things because his emotions are too terrifying for him. And that's the thing. If you think about it, it's terrifying. But when you actually just do it, you realize actually it wasn't that bad. You know, I was just afraid of it because a part of me was afraid. But then you choose bravery and courage and love and you realize actually this is how nice it can be and then you suddenly start seeing like faces and trees and you realize holy shit like the whole world is alive why does never nobody ever talk about that because that's a different kind of reality this materialistic reality the one that science creates that's just bullshit it's just what they tell you so that, that you can work your butt off and live like an animal and grovel in your own dirt but then don't complain to others about it because it's your choice to live like a pig and to live like a dog or whatever you know if you want to live like a dog and be bored and frustrated when you're alone and then wag your tail as soon as somebody comes like <laughs> you know you can be like this when you're alone you have to train that you have to work on it you have to suffer through hell you have to dive into this shit and then you see what the universe comes up with to give you paradise and that's just how it is like take it from me like that kind of wisdom Nobody talks about that shit. And it's not shit. It's like really genuine stuff. And I've discovered it. And I made my experiences and that's the most important part. Make experiences. And it's not like easy to do that. No, you have to struggle through it. It's hard work. It's really hard work. Because you have to undo all the shit you've been told and that's really shit like all the lies you've been told what the world is what you are all these beliefs that just serve the industry so you have to like literally I sometimes it's like unplucking yourself from the lies like, you know you're like deep in the mud and you're like you know it's trying to suck you in and you have to like, yeah. this is hell and I know how it feels like and sometimes like I said I go and help people and suddenly I'm in their hell and then I have to work myself out of this again but I know now how to do it but that's why right now I can't afford it I don't want to go into my dad's hell again because he's there anyway he is there anyway and I help him more if I'm just around, emanating love and light, 
and to always go down into his darkness. Because this is too much, I cannot handle it. I cannot handle his darkness, because it's too much. And I heard it from a friend, he always, his whole life, he tried to help his father, you know, to be more happy. And that made him feel awful. And he said sometimes you would walk around like, you know, like, boom, like radiating energy. You feel like, bam, you know, you're in your full potential. And then he said one, you know, he would touch his father once and he felt like, boom, everything gone. Because he tried something that is not his job. It's not his job to give all this energy to his father. Because his father will snuff it right out. It's not his job to help his father. It's a father's job to help his child. That's how it is. A father ought to help his child. To stand on his own two feet. And then the child comes and discovers spirituality and love. And he wants to share that. But he also wants to be acknowledged by his own father. And that will never happen. Because your father is most likely a materialistic, like, ah, guy. And to him, you're probably weird. You're probably crazy. You know, you're like, with your head in the clouds. Well... You know, that's just me. And if he cannot accept that, well, that's his problem. I just have to work it out for myself. I don't want to leave this place. It's awesome. Like, it looks amazing. Who wouldn't want to be here? It's kind of fresh. You know, I feel the wind on my legs. But I actually feel quite nice. I mean, I was feeling... My room is a mess. I should clean that. But I was just laying there and I was, you know, sleeping. And I said, fuck you, you know. You're not gonna eat anything, you're not gonna drink coffee and force yourself to work on your laptop. No, you're just gonna walk and do the stuff now, go outside, and then you're gonna go back in the evening, you know, dress a bit warmer, and then you record one of these paintings. And I was already looking forward to that, because such beautiful weather, why wouldn't you be outside? Because you're probably thinking, you know, you ought to do all these things, instead of just doing what you want for once. And I like it, I have the time, I record videos, and you know, it's important to do that.